Hey guys, Jason here from Timber Falls, home for CNC creators like you. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the weave tool and make this really cool Celtic knot design in Maker Plus. I started by tracing the vector around, and once I have the continuous design, I also created a little half circle and a half of a square to demonstrate how these shapes can be made. We're going to open up our weave tool, which is up here on the top bar. Once I have the weave tool open, we need to select our drive rails. Now we're going to be using this knot shape as our drive rails. And so that's what we're going to select. Notice that there's a direction or these arrows that show the direction of which way the knot's going to go. You can switch that direction by clicking this little arrow and it will change the direction in which the flow of the rope goes. The next thing we need to do is just select our cross section. The cross section is the shape in which we're going to give the weave. We're going to start by using the round shape and I'm just going to select that as my cross section. And if we turn off our vectors here, we can see that we've made a nice little weave that goes in and out. The size of the shape is controlled by our vector over here so if we want to make this bigger or smaller we can move this in and out we also can use this to make it flatter or taller so you also can put it in reverse and make a reverse or negative weave pattern if we pick the square shape and select that as our cross section we can get a square shape crossover so depending on whatever the shape is of your cross section will govern the shape and look of your weave now we have some settings underneath our crossing options. The first one is the length of our crossover. This is the distance or how far the crossover effect takes place. So the larger the number here that we put, we put three, four inches, you can see that the effect is moving further back. Now this is divided between the cross section. So if you're going over or under, you can put this pretty far and it will start to create the fade further back. If I turn off my vectors, you can see that it's given us a much more smoother or transition into each one of these crossovers. The smaller the number, the more abrupt that that's gonna be. You can see how this gets to the crossover and then makes a quick drop. So by adding a pretty large number in here you're able to extend those crossover sections further back now the next one down is relative to cross section now this measures where that six inches is being measured from whether it's from the center or from the cross section so by checking this it actually moves it further back I prefer to leave this checked. I always find that it makes it look smoother and not as abrupt. The next two settings is the depth or height of your overpasses. And this is basically the percentage of each of the crossovers. By increasing this like to 80%, you can make the crossover drop much lower, 80% of this particular height. Now it's being measured right in the middle. So if you put this at 100%, you'll notice that it comes down and there's still just a little bit. You can go more than 100%. You can go to like 120% and it'll actually go into the negative. So you can make these dip underneath the model. But for a smooth effect, we're just going to go with like 60%. And then the same thing with the height of the overpass. These two settings are relative to each other. So by changing these back and forth, you can change the distance at which they cross over. The next setting down is our corner shape. Now in this example, I have all round corners. If we were to take one of our corners and make a point out of it, let's draw this out. You can designate how it rounds the corners out by changing it from round to square. And this will create a more pointier or square edges, whatever the model shape is. Just like many of our relief combined functions, this can be added, merged, subtracted, or replaced in any other model. If you want to know more about these combined functions, I have a video about the relief combining functions. I'll leave that in the description below. Check out that video if you haven't already seen that one. Let's bring this back. To make the rope effect, basically what I did is I created some vectors that went around the rope. Now, right now, my rope is too fat. I had created some border vectors where I wanted to cut the vectors off, but it's a little fat right now. So what we want to do is I'm going to reset this 
And I'm going to redo that weave. Open my weave back up. Because I had that vector selected when I opened the weave tool, it automatically selected it as the drive rail. All I need to do is select my cross section and then resize my rope till it fits inside of my vectors. Now that I have my rope inside of my vectors, I can create that. And then if I select all these little cutouts that I make, this is what's going to help us give the appearance of that rope. I'm simply going to go up here to my shape editor and I have it set to square and we're going to hit subtract. Now if I can turn this off I can see what these look like. And you can see that it's created these little slat sort of cutouts around our rope. Now it went past the model and that's okay. I'm just going to hit apply. Close that. And if I turn my vectors back on I've created some border vectors. So I'm just going to go in and select these border vectors. And now with all of our border vectors selected all we have to do is go up here to our zero outside of vector tool and when we select that it's going to zero everything outside of those vectors now those vectors i created allowed us to cut off all those parts that were overextended and that's how we create that celtic rope knot using the weave tool and the shape editor guys if you find this content valuable consider subscribing to the channel and give us a thumbs up share this with someone and leave us a comment down below thanks guys see you on the next one mm -hmm.